Standing by in the green room is founder and chairman of Create TV Media, Peter Cathy. He will be telling us the top 10 predictions for media and entertainment for the upcoming year. We'll have that coming up. 2020 begins a new decade that pushes media and entertainment boundaries and possibilities significantly further. Joining us to tell us more about his top 10 predictions for media and entertainment is uh, founder and chairman of Creative TV, Peter Chatty. Good to be here. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Uh, wh wh why would, t tell us how your business, your company, why you are, you have this Nostradamus ability. <laughs> well, I would like to think I do. Um, I've been in the media and entertainment and tech world for a long time, so 30 years. And I've been both inside the traditional media companies like Universal and then also as a serial entrepreneur building digital media companies. So I've seen how tech has transformed the business. All right, well, let's see we, how many we can burn through. All right, let's uh, Your pr prediction number one as it relates to the great streaming wars oh, is? Yes. Well, it's going to be a crazy time. It's going to be a great time for consumers with all this choice out there now that we don't just have Netflix and Hulu. Uh, Disney Plus just uh, launched about a month ago and Apple TV Plus and then HBO Max is coming out in the early part of the year as is NBC Universal's Peacock. So there's going to be great programs programming for consumers, it's going to be tough for those companies to break through, and Netflix will be challenged for the first time. And what does it, what does it mean for over-the-air TV? Uh, well, over-the-air TV news, as an example, sports, absolutely critical for most people still. So it's going to, but there's going to be a need to adapt and engage more fully, like on mobile devices and things like that. Prediction number two, as yes. it relates to innovation, as we cut the cord, what does that specify what that means? Uh, uh, well, cutting the cord means that those who have had cable packages and satellite packages, they go instead over to the internet-driven services like the Netflixes and Disney Pluses. So that's the cord cutting, which has accelerated over the past couple of years because there's all these choices now on the streaming side. And that's where people take a lot of their video on demand. But cord nevering, so these are the younger people who They're never that never signed up because they started with mobile phones in their hands. They're digital natives. They'll look at a cable box and say, what what the heck was that? Yeah, right. why? Yeah. They would never sign up. All right. Cord uh, prediction number three as it relates to me mega ma media mergers. Yeah, well, so last year we had CBS, this past year, CBS and Viacom merged. And the year before we had Disney that was sucking in the Fox uh, uh, entertainment assets and th there's been this parade of endless consolidation in the business because of all these changes that we're talking about and so now essentially all the media companies have, have found their dance partners and so that's so that's, that's going to be down. slow down all right uh, prediction number four the once maligned streaming industry uh, again drives double-digit growth for the music industry yes Explain. yeah great optimism now in the music business after 20 years of decline well artists start to see a bigger share of their I mean right now artists are making their money on the road as yeah. opposed to the other way around oh, yeah. will they ever will will music creating music ever generate the revenue it once did uh, in a different kind of way but the answer is yes. I'm an optimist. The streaming services them themselves are not going to be s satisfying to artists in terms of the economics. But what it does is it allows artists to build an audience, engage with an audience that they can then make money from in all all kinds of other ways. And plus it cuts out the middle middleman. They, yeah. they can get right to their customers. Right? Absolutely. And that's the promise of the Internet. All right. Number five. Uh, Augmented reality, uh, can you talk a little bit about what's going to happen in that industry? Yeah, we've talked a lot about for the past several years that it's the coming wave of virtual reality and augmented reality. And, and augmented reality is semi-immersive, so you can see, I can see you as I have images that are projected onto my glasses. Right. So a few years back, if you remember, Google Glasses mm -hmm. was a disaster. Right. It was an embarrassment. But this year because we have 5G coming on board, and 5G is gonna be driving better experiences for AR, and Apple is expected to finally launch their next big thing, which is their AR glasses. So your sixth prediction, it relates to 5G networks. Can yeah. you expand on that? Yeah, so 5G is going to actually launch in earnest. We've heard about it from AT&T and Verizon for a long, long time, but actually the markets are, some markets are gonna start being active with that kind of capacity available to them. So that means that uh, that the new iPhone, as an example, is expected to be 5G combat compatible, and other 5G compatible phones will will enter the marketplace, which are going to transform our experiences because better video on these devices 
eSports, which is a very big thing for the young kids. Where, where you bring us to Prediction 7, the yeah. eSports. Esports bubble. What's going to happen there? Yeah, esports. Um, there's been it, it's been such a hot, a hot under the radar kind of marketplace. Esports is young kids who are watching other young kids play like video, video games. games, sometimes in stadiums, increasingly in stadiums. So it, it's this massive. It's nuts. It, it is. It's over a billion dollar industry today. It's going to double in size because of 5G. It's going to grow it even further. The end of the world as we know. <laughs> uh, it's all good stuff. I, 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 I'm just I'm an old. -time. <laughs> uh, we got about 30 seconds yeah, here. Okay. I want to bang through these last three. Sure. Uh, prediction eight, artificial intelligence. What's going to happen there? Yeah, we're already used to Siri and Alexa in our, our lives. Now we're going to have more of those kinds of artificial artificial human interactions that are going to be entering our lives. Now, prediction nine, real, not virtual live experiences. What, what does that mean? Well, it means that we're increasingly heads down in this digital age. Right. But there's still this need for us as human beings to to be with one another at the gatherings of the tribe. And so getting outside to music festivals, live experiential entertainment that's still is important. Be, that, so that's going to be bigger than ever in 2020. It's, it's already growing fast. All right, last but certainly not least is uh -huh. the prediction as it re relates to fake news. Wrap it up for me, Peter. Well, okay, so the downside is that there's going to be a, a, uh, a march of fake news, obviously, because it's an election year coming up. And we're going to see some big hacks continue because that's the way of the world. But my optimism is that by the end of the year, we're going to start turning things around a little bit, a little bit more positivity. So that's the way I'm feeling. Peter, this was a positive experience. Thank oh, you very much for uh, to do it. spending some of your morning with us. Good and, to be uh, here. Merry ho-ho and happy uh, holiday you season. You too. To Have you. a great holiday. All right.